thank you so much, Gita Mathur, for joining us on Hundred Women of Impact. It's fantastic to have you here. Um, I, of course, I had heard about you long time ago with a lot of common friends, but it's only when we started working together on Saja that I got an opportunity to connect with you, spend some time with you, and uh, your journey uh, from a banker to an entrepreneur now to be a, a strong woman leader on various uh, boards as an independent director is nothing short of inspiring. And uh, we would love to hear, my audience would love to hear your inspiring journey. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Sarika, for your kind words. And thank you for calling me. I mean, I've really enjoyed whatever time we had on Saja with us. Your energy is amazing. So the respect is mutual. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. I'm glad Anna. to be here. I'm glad to be you, here. You have always been a friend and a mentor all rolled into one. Uh, so Gita, just, you know, there are many people who keep thinking about, especially women, uh, as they go through many transitions in their own life journeys. Um, and with that, sometimes a career journey transition is also required. Uh, you've been a banker. You were a chartered accountant. You had a great banking uh, career. Um, then post that, you became an entrepreneur. And now, of course, you are uh, uh, you know, a voice, a very, very powerful voice on various listed company boards. Uh, and one of the few women um, on the boards, as you know, the women on boards is a very big journey. Of course, we have made progress and it is a long journey. Could you share a bit about this transition in different roles and different journeys and how did you come about it and what made you go through these transitions? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, as you only mentioned, I mean, um, Sarika, my journey actually has, uh, you know, been one with a lot of starts, stops, you know, a uh, lot of changes moving from... Uh, you know, I plenty of bold decisions actually. You know, I've changed organizations, I've changed job profiles, I've started my own business. I moved from banking to corporate sector to development sector. And now I work with, you know, several good boards, different industries, different cultures, and different ownership structures, right? So uh this you know, through this whole journey, I think what has sort of been uh, some of my uh mantras are a is that you know whatever i'm doing whether it was in icsci or whether it was in uh, uh, any of the other things i'm giving it my 100 percent right so that's the one thing whether i'm enjoying it whether i'm not enjoying it whether something is tough for me whether something is creating uh, angst in me i'm still giving it 100 percent i've never sort of you know drifted along so as to speak right so that's been one of my mantras Second thing is that I have realized that a lot of things, a lot of changes that I made, um, you know, common sense is the biggest thing which helps you through these changes. Uh, I mean, there are rocket scientists, obviously, then there are computer scientists, electric engineers, but most of the work that we do is actually not rocket science. So I think common sense helps you to actually de-layer a lot of complexities which you may think uh, which a company change, uh, right? So that's another thing. Uh, third thing is, I think, and uh, you know, path of, I mean, my moral and emotional GPS, you know, has always shown me the path of being hundred percent honest and committed, right? So uh, irrespective of, as I said, even if I was, and I'll just share with you, even if I was an organization which I wasn't particularly enjoyed enjoying. Um, my blood used to boil even if something wrong happened there. So I think a 100% commitment to whatever you're doing uh, is important, right? And then, of course, you know, I mean, I think I just believe that there is, through this journey, I mean, I've relied very heavily on this whole concept of karma and dharma, you know, having faith and patience. I believe that nothing in life is permanent, whether, you know, um, good times or bad times or, you know, changes. So everything that happens around us is not in our control. I, first of all, I believe that. You know, uh, moving on from here in terms of how you transitioned your careers and what helped you to make those transitions successful, mm. I actually ask you what leadership principles or strategies you feel are very crucial or you felt that has made uh, things very possible for you. So you spoke about transitions on some of the values and some of the yeah. behaviors which you exhibit but in terms of leadership strategies or any particular thought process uh, which basically oh. helped you to navigate some very tough if with some anecdote if you can share which name helped you to navigate some tough challenges uh, in your career so uh, you know I as I said I mean I think uh, whether this, this journey of being you know a rookie and leader and you know 
all that i think is leadership eventually only about you know inspiring and enabling your team right to perform to the best of their abilities that's what leadership is so i think my first and foremost commitment as a leader has been of transparency right in sharing of information in delegation of duties and lots of it in performance appraisals so whether you know i mean i've never kept any information to myself or uh been shy of giving compliments when people have done well sharing credit with them in fact giving them the credit or sharing credit and you know if there are some areas to improve um i mean not lamenting about their any weaknesses because none of us is perfect uh but you know especially in the soft skills side if there are people missing so that's been one thing of you know being transparent and again you know i'm back to the integrity thing that i've actually had no hidden agendas ever uh, wherever i've worked i've had no agendas which were to do with me myself it has always been aligned the interest with that of the team and more than that aligned the interest with that of the organization um as i said my blood used to boil if anything was happening which was not in you know which was not right for the organization so i think uh, that's been another this thing and uh, i i thought has been you know a genuine belief actually asarika and an effort to bring diversity of skills and background in my team uh, you know it just makes for far more productive teams and i mean of course you have to create an environment of trust and respect when you have diverse people but then just makes for really more productive teams for example in icici right so we were there were engineer mbas there were only mbas there were cas and then there were economists so i think having them all on our team and just making effective use so there were a lot of people who felt the economists were not really you know required in the team uh, but i just felt that you know if you just build on the strength of all these people the final output is is exceptional so i think there was always my my attempt was and you know some of them were common resources in icici right uh, some resources were resting in your team and some resources were common resources for the organization uh you know even for example um you know the risk team which used to sit in bombay i always found a lot of value in leaning into those teams and you know talking about my uh, projects before with them rather than you know later when things were closing so i think diverse teams just has been to make sure that i use all resources at my disposal as in one of my leadership mantras and the last thing i want to say is that you know i've always brought my whole self to work so my experiences from all organizations right so even in like now i work with several boards so i'm actually cross pollinating every time i'm sitting on one board or the other i'm cross pollinating ideas but when i say whole self i also mean you know my experiences at home i mean you may laugh about it but you know like how the maids negotiate how the vegetable vendor does his cash flow based pr- pricing how your kids manipulate you so you know all those realizations actually make you understand that you have to accept and compromise in some situations you know so it's i mean that behavior also it's accepting yeah. human behaviors and biases any behavior right you can't always be a winner so you can't just keep seeking constant perfection because you know and in the process you learn that you don't have to be too tough on yourself or on others you know we all work in progress right i mean as human beings as organizations and so any failures will also kind of you know help us get better that not vida in fact yeah. what you said is so beautiful i mean you spoke about sharing credit you spoke about leveraging the diversity of uh, skills and competencies in the team having that authentic and transparent communication and relationships with your team members yeah. and of course most importantly acknowledging successes as well as failures so i want you to hold on to this because there are not too many leaders who talk about acknowledging forget about celebrating even acknowledging failures and all of us have gone through some failure or the other would you want to you know share something for all our audience because i personally believe that failures are nothing but a moments of truth for us as well as a great learning opportunity but if you could share one or two examples of yours where you felt um how you felt that it is actually time to celebrate those failures because it gave you more opportunities or it it opened more eyes for you yeah so as i, I was just telling you i think acknowledging mistakes is very liberating for me and you know acknowledging a failure is very very liberating for me it's just sort of this thing so i'll share i mean i'll share the journey of my entrepreneurial journey with you uh, sarika when i decided to be an entrepreneur see i have you know i think there is a bit of this thing in me that i'm too bold right so i think when i'm making decisions possibly that trait kind of 
comes ahead and karke dekhte hain chalega dekhte hain so even this decision of getting into a business was not so well thought through okay so it was i was working at emr mgf and you know i had decided to move on from there but i had not yet decided what i want to do and a friend of mine you know he was setting up a microfinance entrepreneur business so he approached me he used to be my client so he had a lot of uh, you know respect for me and he just said that i'd be a good partner for him he felt having a finance background and i also got into it right so um you know i mean i don't want to go into the business model and the issues there but all in all we gave it the trial for one and a half years and it didn't work out and i think it didn't also work out because i was a banker you know a banker is has a mindset of you know cash flows which are certain and cash flows which will bring back your loan whereas an entrepreneur has to have a risk taking ability to say okay double or quits here yeah. so you know i was not meant to be an entrepreneur i did not have the risk taking ability uh to be i mean i maybe if i had, and you know i was just so, so much a structured banker i set up in my own mind and with him milestones that if we achieve so much by this time you know then we'll pursue if we don't then we'll kind of wrap up we'll wind down with this thing so i don't think that's the way to do business i've realized it now right but i think that whole experience actually and fortunately the good thing was that i realized it soon i didn't I didn't like not too much of my capital went down the drain not too much of my time was wasted so i realized it sooner so but you know the thing whole thing is that because of this whole experience now and when i'm sitting in a board i exactly know the angst of the founders i mean this experience of having been an entrepreneur has helped me so much in terms of just understanding how a founder thinks you know how to manage capital how i mean how to manage risk how to allocate capital i mean it's really actually uh, made me a much think from the other effective, side uh, yeah much a more much more effective board member i would say is moving on to this and we spoke about being on the boards you are also an independent rep for diverse set of companies uh, whether it's on infoedge which is into uh, recruitment uh, business whether it's ifl which is a pure finance business which of course you have a very very clear understanding but many other industries also yeah yeah how do you keep abreast with different trends of different industries and making sure that you're making uh, a the right choices of the roles you are taking up as well as being the right value added add to that particular board because they come from diverse skill sets and diverse mm -hmm. roles and of course the industries are also as diverse as it can get mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know i think um, sarika uh, icsc experience helps me a lot you know in icsc the way we were structured we were and if you remember this thing we had different industries in our portfolio right and any project that you looked at in terms of uh, this thing it was starting mr kamat wanted everything i mean it started from all the global scenario of the industry you know different duty structures where uh, where the raw materials are going to be sourced from location of the plant was it the right location from the evacuation of product proximity to markets what you don't so oh, well, is it because for any project viability we had to go through so much detail uh to to establish that that we always had to deep dive into the industry mm -hmm. so i mean that whole that exp that experience that i had there what i learned there has been really helpful for me in this uh getting this different uh, to being on the board of different industries so you know as first of all i want to tell you that each time i get in get on the board of a, any company i ask for a very i mean detailed induction program uh, a real deep dive induction program okay which means it's i visit factories if i have to and i visited factories of the companies that i work with and then of course meeting all the business leaders all the functional leaders and uh, understanding the nuances of each uh, business so uh, and while doing that you know so i for example i will definitely ask everybody all the leaders what is their daily dashboard look like what are the top 3 things on the daily dashboard then i will figure out what is in the their weekly dashboard their fortnightly dashboard their monthly dashboard so i actually get into that because i think that's the information then that gives you the testing of that what is important for the mm -hmm. industry 
again the next thing is that uh, you know i mean i actually i ask this question to everybody what is giving you sleepless nights so that's something i ask each person i meet in the company and i i meet everybody before during the board or after even i've joined the board as an induction so that gives me what are the risk areas what is it that i need to be cautious of where do i need to focus more because i'm a governance and risk specialist in the companies that i work my contribution is to what governance and risk i'm not a person who's advising people on the hr strategy i'm not a person who's advising people on the sales strategy i'm advising on governance and risk so all these things equip me to talk about uh, risk with them next thing that i've done is you know i'm in because i was in banking myself and because i was in corporate finance i have a whole network of bankers that i know right so i keep in touch with them if there any murmurs about the company about the industry so that i keep in touch i also the big four because again i'm a pw but you know i have ey auditing and all these guys are there right so i keep in touch with them to figure out and they there's a lot of sharing of knowledge that they do because they keep bringing up various papers on whatever news happening right so they have thought leadership people they have knowledge sharing events i attend all of them so i'm a part of kpmg audit committee council i'm a part of russell rainers nrc council so i i just make myself part of these count various councils that are there for actually this purpose of being updated because there may be some regulatory changes how does it impact various industries uh you know if for example in nrc what are the trends emerging what are the ch- the challenges people face in succession planning so you know you all get together share experiences which help so those are the some of the things that i you do to just keep in touch with people this is fantastic so the learning never ever stops basically never <laughs> i don't think it shouldn't it will be so boring I my last think- question to you before we wrap this really really interesting conversation which i wish we don't need to uh, wrap up but my last question to you you spoke about continuous learning and how you ultimately keep adapting to different environments and keep investing in your skills and uh, competencies and learning around it one advice which you would give to the younger generation on continuous learning i think the way pace of change i think everybody must be anyway aware of they have to unless they keep continuously learning they are going to be out of this race here yeah. so i think your people who join your university are smart people i think they will know that it doesn't need you know, so i think as individuals as leaders i think we have to recognize the importance of developing agility and a growth mindset right i mean that is a given so i think the idea is to become lifelong learners right it's not about doing a course here and the idea is to become lifelong learners whether it's reading about something new for one hour reading about half an hour it becomes so easy you have audio books you have podcast so i think just continuous devoting half an hour to one hour a day depending on your calendars to something new that you listen into right listen into read whatever because change is going to be everywhere uh, careers personal life community organization and i think another thing that comes to, for dealing with change besides lifelong learning is lifelong learning is your eq right you have to start working on it you know to as i said to develop humility in yourself to develop curiosity so that you are thinking on your feet and taking thoughtful action you know rather than just a reaction so eq and you know just curiosity and i mean that's one thing and i already spoke about analytical skills i think we have to just each one of us has to start looking at how do we de-layer and simplify a complex situation because as the world is changing there will be a lot more complexities coming up so just you know using common sense and analytical skills so that we sort of simplify things you know demystify things that is one thing that i think people need to do and i think if it is meant for your guys who are um you know i didn't have to learn how to manage diversity how to get extract the benefits of diversity i think that's very important for people because you know whether it's age whether it's intellect whether it's gender whether it's background i think each one has so much to contribute differently that i think people need to work need to learn to work with diverse set of people 
that's one skill I think you need to develop. You know, Geeta, I think this has been such an interesting uh, discussion. For me, some of the key takeaways have been how you need to ultimately have that humility all the time to say, I have to learn more. I have to be in a continuous lifelong, lifelong learner journey. I have to be open to ask questions and ask for help when needed or give help when someone yeah. is asking. Yeah. You know, be open and uh, and I would say be open and transparent and authentic in all kinds of relationships, whether it's at work or uh, whether it's at work. As well as... And accept diversity. Yeah. And accept and diversity and also keep investing in yourself, specifically where technical skills are required or your EQ you. is required or soft skills. Or even invest the time and resources to build a relevant, authentic network. Yes. Because I think that's far more important. It's not about exchanging of cards, but actually yes. relationships, which is goes beyond the work hours, I would say. Truly, truly. truly. Thank truly. you so much, Geeta. I think this thank has you, been a great discussion. I took a lot of uh, you know, insights I for my enjoyed, I enjoy talking. Uh, thank you so much for having me thank here. Thank you again. so much for joining us. Thank you.